This video is all about how I painted my painting, the Fairy Kit. First, let us discuss the layout and composition of the painting. This is a photo of a kit taken by my friend, Mike Lemus. I asked for and have permission to paint this picture. I decided to reverse the image so the kit is on the right side of the picture. And then I wasn't happy with the trees, so I found a better one in a nearby park and photographed it. I arranged my elements with respect to the rule of thirds, but I also take a careful look at golden sections as well. Notice the kit's eye lands right on the golden section. I prepare my illustration board by priming it with titanium white paint. Then I affix masking to protect the board where the kit and tree will be later. For this painting, I have mounted my camera above my artboard so I can film while painting. I'm going to focus in this video on painting the baby fox known as a kit. The rest of the painting is worked and the paper mask removed so we can paint the kit on a fresh white board. One of the first things I need to do is to roughen up the edge where the paper mask used to be. I will use an X-Acto knife and an eraser to do this. This softer edge will give a more fur-like boundary between the kit and the background. I'm just scratching lines into the background paint over and over all along the edge. Later on, I will use some Liquitex heavy body paint to overpaint more fur tufts. But for now, we'll just scratch at the edge. The rose is just to cover up my hat with something more interesting than the top of my head. Hi, Ollie. Switching to the coarse eraser to further adjust the edge. Now we will start the painting with the airbrush using sepia. I'm still using the eraser to make the fur tuft details. I have put up an image of the fox's face nearby, so you have a reference image to see. I put down a layer of paint, then scratch more tufts, and do this over and over again. I have made black circles and other marks to denote important features of the kit. This helps me keep track of where I'm at on the painting. Later, when we use the brown, yellow, green, and other transparent colors, the sepia and black will show through these. Hi buddy! Notice the magnified view on the right. I hope this will help you better see what I am working on and where the paint is going. I need my hat to keep the glare from the light out of my eyes. My eyes are very sensitive to light. Now we start softening up the line of the snout. Again, I use paint followed by the eraser again and again.
We will also start the left eye and soften up that iris. I use a hair dryer to speed up the paint drying. This allows me to keep going quickly. I can rub details into the iris using the eraser. Now let us work on some of the shadowing on the face and the darker tufts of fur. There is no need to get all of the details in the first pass. We will make multiple passes over the same area, giving it more depth to the fur. Adding paint allows me to soften up the edge of the nose. Deepening the shadows on the left side of the snout. Gradually, we define more and more of the snout. Now we will work on the fur tufts on the chest of the fox. We are working our way down the side. Down on the legs, the color gets very dark. I just spray a little patch and then work that before moving on to spray the next patch. This way the paint is not too dry. It is easier to remove the paint with the eraser when it is still a bit damp. Working more on the legs, especially the furry edges which need softening. Occasionally, I erase pencil marks before proceeding. I use the X-Acto knife to etch in deeper marks when the eraser will not do the job well enough. More work on the fur tufts on the chest. There are a lot of these, so it will take some time. I try to make them using dagger strokes, but I'm not very good at that. 
so I will use the eraser and X-Acto knife to refine the tufts. I can completely remove a tuft if needed. Now I will use a paper mask for more control while making individual tufts. This is the same mask I was using earlier to make leaves. Adding more definition to the snout by shadowing underneath the snout. Yep. I have a tuft to get rid of with the X-Acto knife. We will remove others with the eraser. Working some of the darker shadow on the chest. More shadows and tufts help define the chin. Let us work on that second eye on the right. First, we will soften the iris and the lids around it. The pupil is added quickly. Details can be added to the iris using the eraser. Details around the eye can be added slowly. The eyes are very important, so I put a lot of effort into refining them.
Now we will add some more shadows to the snout. Slowly, the details are building. We start defining the rest of the head by adding a shadow behind it on the back. Now we start working with some color. I am using a brown cut with some white paint to make it opaque. This keeps me from going too dark with the color. I continue with eraser work to create more and more of the tuft-like details. The brighter side of the fox's head needs more of the lighter browns. We can add details to the head and ears. Working down the back and sides begins to give the body more shape. More paint gives me a darker brown area to work with. I am working my way down the side to the legs. Now we fill in some of the color on the other legs. We can also work up on the chest where there are still more tufts to make.
Now to deepen the color, I switch to burnt umber. This gives me a richer reddish brown. adding more definition to the head. Now we will boost the saturation up with some transparent yellow. I could probably have thinned that yellow out a bit more with some colorless. You can get intense color quickly with transparent paints. Working with burnt sienna. Now the color is really starting to shine. We really get the face details built in now with this color. Working on the eyes, they really begin to shine. Adding transparent moss green. Green may seem weird, but the kit's fur is reflecting the greenery. So this helps merge the kit with the background painting. I touch the painting a lot.
I'm rubbing off eraser dust and grit. Adding touches of green to the tips of the ears also helps blend things together. Sometimes you have to take a bit of artistic license when painting, especially when combining elements that were not together to start with. Moving back to sepia, we add more details to the face. We can also deepen the shadows here. Add a highlight to the nose with the X-Acto knife. A brief bit of sprayed paint blends the highlights in nicely. Adding the specular reflection to the eye makes the eye look so awesome. Adding some shadowing around the edges. This helps give the body some curvature so it does not look so flat. With the kit mostly done, we need to build up the foliage around the feet. I'm adding leaves in this area with various green paints mixed with white for opacity. The kit's feet are hidden by the foliage. I am using paper masks to help me keep track of where I'm at. Combine bits of torn paper to help me form the correct shapes. I do not mind getting paint on my fingers as it dries quickly. You will build some of the darker color around the feet. This will complete the shadows behind the leaves. Bit by bit, the area is getting filled in. Steadily, the feet are disappearing. Sometimes I use a lot of torn paper. Some pieces of paper have been cut to give them a curved shape. This is helpful when defining sharper curved edges like on blades of grass.
almost all gone. Now the feet are well hidden. I will use some gray paint here to add details to the leaf litter. Some of these features help define where the kit's feet are and are not. I jump around a lot when I am painting. Back to adding shadowing with sepia. Now we will boost the brightness some with some yellow on the foliage. I added some detailing to the leaves with a darker green. Some of these were corrected later with an opaque lighter green. With all the masking removed, we can add some of the finishing touches to the kit. I touched up some of the surroundings with transparent burnt sienna. Notice the added tufts to the edges of the kit. These were added by hand off camera using a liner brush. Some gray paint is used to enhance some background details. I'm using May Green mixed with white to fix some leaf highlights. I used a transparent moss green again on the left of the kit to help with the green reflected color. And there it is, the finished kit in the rest of the painting. This was a delightful project. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did. If you liked this video, please check out some of my other videos. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.